Bhagavad Gita 
सकुण तव पाद पद्म मोहम कशम बहुत न भजे
प्रणतेषु चरणाश्रयदान कृपा मयि नमोस्तुते लज्जा पटावृते नित्यम् शारदे ज्ञानदायिके पापे भ्यो न सदा रक्ष कृपा मयि नमोस्तुते राम कृष्ण गत प्राणाम तन्नाम श्रवण प्रिया तद्भावरंजिता कारा प्रणमामि मोहर मोह पवित्रम चरितम यस्या पवित्रम जीवनम तथा पवित्रता स्वरोपिन्ये तस्ये कुर्मो नमो नमः देवीं प्रसन्नाम प्रणतात्रिहंत्रिम योगेन्द्र पोजाम योगधर्मापात्रिम ताम शारदाम भक्ति विज्ञान दात्रिम दया स्वरूपाम प्रणामामि नित्यम् स्नेहेन बद्धासिमानोस मधियम् दोषान अशेषान सगुणि करोषि आहेतुनानो दयसे सदोषान स्वांगे ग्रहित्वायदिदम् विचित्रम् प्रसीदमातर विनये नयाचे नित्यम् भवस्ने हवते सुतेशु प्रेमाइक बिंदुं चिरदर्धचित्ते विशिष्टचेतम् गुरुना सुशांतम् जननीम् शारदाम् देवे राम कृष्णम् जगत् गुरुम् पाद पद्मे तयो हस्रत्वा प्रणमामि मोहर मोह प्रणमामि मोहर मोह भजनमाल पेज टू जीरो जीरो रेंडु सुन्ना सुन्ना
ಶ್ಯಾಮಸುತ ಅತಿ ನಿರಮ ಶಾರ <laughs> 
राम कृष्ण शरण शरण प्रभु राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण शरण शरणागत हम शरणागत हम शरणागत हम शरण शरणागत हम शरणागत हम शरणागत हम शरण प्रभु राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण शरण प्रभु राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण शरण नमो श्री गुरव नमो श्री गुरव नमो श्री गुरव नमो नम नमो श्री गुरव नमो श्री गुरव नमो श्री गुरव नमो नम जय जय राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण शरण जय जय राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण शरण राम कृष्ण राम कृष्ण जय जय राम कृष्ण 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 राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण शरण जय जय राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण शरण जय जय राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण शरण जय जय राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण राम कृष्ण शरण शरण जय जय राम कृष्ण शरण शरण जय जय राम कृष्ण शरण शरण जय जय राम कृष्ण शरण शरण जय भगवान श्री राम कृष्ण देव के जय जय श्री शारदा माई के जय जय स्वामी विवेकानंद महाराज जी के जय जय स्वामी ब्रह्मानंद महाराज जी के जय now there will be a discourse on the life and teachings of swami brahmananda maharaj at the temple basement hall all the devotees can proceed to temple basement hall
हेलो माइक चेक ओम नमो भगवते रामकृष्णाय माय हम्बल प्रणाम्स टू एवरीबडी टुडे एज वी नो इज स्वामी ब्रह्मानंद जी जयंती एंड विल बी डिस्कसिंग सम ऑफ द लाइफ एंड टीचिंग्स ऑफ स्वामी ब्रह्मानंद एंड विल बी मेनली फोकसिंग ऑन सम वेरी फंडामेंटल काउंसिल्स दैट ही गेव ऑन द वेरी फंडामेंटल क्वेश्चन ऑफ लाइफ before taking up his teachings i would like to give a brief summary of his life uh this is for the first timers who have not heard of swami brahmanand ji maharaj so a brief sketch of his life swami brahmanand ji maharaj's pre monastic name was rakal chandra gosh the name rakal in sanskrit means a cowherd boy incidentally if we read his biographies uh, we'll come to know that there are many glimpses of his personality which is very devoted to shri ram uh, shri krishna his father was a very well wealthy lawyer and he was a aristocrat too in shikra kulingram west bengal shikra kulingram almost is about 50 kilometers from kolkata so he, he was born there on 21st january 1863 he came to kolkata when he was 12 years old for higher studies and there he met even swami vivekananda swami vivekananda and rakhal that is swami brahmanand ji maharaj were great friends and they were childhood friends and they remained friends almost to the end of their lives they joined the brahmo samaj then that particular cult uh, was they, it was kind of in thing that time and it was considered a reformative and a progressive hindu cult later in his life unfortunately maybe according to the prevalent customs rakal was forced to get married at the age of 18 he even had a son but the son did not live long enough but fortunately the wife of swami brahmanand ji maharaj was uh, she was also of a very spiritual nature so there were no further issues and strangely enough in fact it is ironical that the brother of his wife introduced him to shri ram krishna and strangely enough shri ram krishna also had prayed a few years back that he wanted a pure companion whom he can talk on spiritual topics because he was vexed on talking all the topics of this world he was vexed to talk about family problems and all this kind of women problems etc 
so he prayed to divine mother may i get a pure hearted companion whom i can talk on gods and spiritual subjects and shri ram krishna later even had a vision mother kali revealed shri ram krishna a beautiful vision it was a vision of two boys playing on a lotus on a blue lotus and one of the boys was shri krishna and the other was his playmate and mother told him that this is your spiritual son and when later when rakal arrived it was he was he was about 18 years old or 19 when he arrived at dakshineshwar shri ram krishna immediately recognized him as the same boy from that vision that he had and he treated him like his own son in fact if you read about his life will be convinced that he had all the qualities of his master that is shri ram krishna like father like son is a perfect epithet that we can describe their relationship under the guidance of the master he practiced intense austerities and attained highest levels of spiritual illumination after shri ram krishna's maha samadhi in 1886 swami brahmanand ji maharaj lived an intensely com- contemplative life full of austerities and meditation at varanasi vrindavan puri and many other spiritual places he used to remain absorbed in meditation and spiritual practices for days together later when he was asked about the spiritual life he said spiritual life starts after nirvikalpa samadhi there are so many incidents about him remaining absorbed in nirvikalpa samadhi for 5 days together when swami vivekanand vivekananda returned from america in 1897 he established the belur mat and he made swami brahmanand ji maharaj the first president of the order because he knew his kingly administrative qualities swami vivekananda used to call him raja because of his administrative skills since then he was respectively called as raja maharaj or even shri maharaj he was also one of the six disciples of shri ram krishna who were called ishwar kotis ishwar koti are souls who come when an avatar descends on earthly plane during his tenure as a president he was almost 21 years he w- he was the president of our order the order underwent huge expansion and great progress of serving god in men were taken up and most importantly he took care of the monks and he stressed on the contemplative lives of the monks and this served as a counterbalance to all the activities that ramkrishna mission had taken up sadly enough at the age of 59 swami brahmanand ji maharaj gave up his body after a brief illness on 10th april 1922 at the same place where his body is cremated in belur mat a beautiful temple now stands in his memory you can see this in the presentation that's the temple of swami brahmanand ji maharaj so this was a brief sketch of his life now before diving straight into his teachings let us as sadhakas as spiritual seekers ask a few fundamental questions to our own selves when we ask these questions to our own selves these questions itself act as a starting point it acts as a springboard it acts as a segue to start a spiritual life and when we ask these fundamental questions and when they are answered by a great personality like swami brahmanand ji maharaj we will be able to resolve our own understandings of life our own 
in fact misunderstandings of life and attain true value fulfillment and blessing so monumentally who is better than swami brahmanand ji maharaj the direct disciple of shri ram krishna to resolve our doubts or conflicts or insecurities we need to understand that illumined souls stand on the cusp on the borderline in between the formless and the form and name they stand on the border and from that vintage point they'll be able to properly guide us they stand on this cusp of creator and creation so these are a few questions that i have noted down which may which when we ask ourselves may act as a springboard to spiritual life so all human beings we everybody each one of us at some point of our time at some point of our so called evolution of human life we will get a curiosity to know the why's and what's of life this this usually happens when the house of life do not interest us interest us must because they do not interest why why does the house don't interest us because by knowing the house of life we we are not that fulfilled we are not satisfied there always is a, something there is something missing kind of a feeling which never goes it is persistent it nags us it's an innate feeling of emptiness even if you know so many things suppose you know how the world works suppose you know how all the machines work suppose you know even how the body works suppose you are the best doctor in the world and suppose you are the best psychologist in the world suppose you know how exactly the world our mind works but still after knowing all this knowledge there will be still an unfulfilled feeling of incompleteness and void so it is at this juncture that we ask the ultimate we ask our so called realized men and we seek it is at this point where we ask the why's and the what's of life it is at this juncture we become true spiritual seekers and stop being unconscious drifters in this so called river of life strange very strange questions start popping up like as you can see on the screen why is this life the way it is why is this life so difficult to understand why is there so much suffering to some and so little suffering to others and why is this inequality in fact and we even have some what's like what exactly is the nature of life what is the purpose or meaning of me being in this life why have i been born and like basic questions like what is happiness so these questions start emerging in your mind's eye when you are fed up of the house when you have known everything but still there is this incompleteness that nags us it is at that point these questions starts arising and it is at that point we start being true spiritual seekers and only when such existential questions start arising in our minds we start seek we start seeking and awakening to the real spiritual dimension and basically these questions are not found in our sense bound life no schools no teachers no universities answer these fundamental existential questions all the great holy men of india and the world are in their core seekers of these fundamental questions their main motive is to seek what is the main motive for them to seek it is basically a deep sense of unfulfillment within a deep sense of a kind of emptiness you can say and they are the real heroes 
because they are true to themselves they want to answer they want to answer that emptiness they want to answer that ennui they want to answer that anxiety they want answers to them they just don't hide behind a particular mask or they don't hide behind some particular religion sect or any kind of comforts of life they want to know the truth at any cost they go to any extent they don't really care about recognition they don't even care about some kind of contribution to the society or any kind of creative fulfillment they just want answers to these fundamental questions they seek the truth in all their frightening consequences when you start seeking truth a lot of unconscious you can say monsters come up and they are boldly facing these kinds of unconscious monsters your innate animalistic reptilian tendencies so we can easily say that the road to truth is not laid of roses it is there are enough monsters that you need to face and swami brahmanand ji was no exception when he came to shri ram krishna he also had those fundamental questions like what you see on the screen he was married he had and he actually didn't want to get married his father was forcing him to come back and he wanted to live a spiritual life and this tremendous conflicts these insecurities these inner struggles turmoils he had everything and it is then that he came to shri ram krishna and shri ram krishna like a loving mother he accepted him and treated him like a his own child but we need to understand shri ram krishna was not an ordinary mother he was a mother who had reached the highest peaks of spiritual illumination he had climbed almost all the peaks that you can even can't even think of you can say he was like a mother cow overflowing with the milk of love and knowledge ready to feed her children and rakal was her favorite child rakal the cowherd boy and rakal swami brahmanand ji maharaj was also very innocent and he was like a needy boy who is very curious to know the spiritual treasures that his mother is showing him in fact there is a, a nice incident that occurs to my mind he says to mother kali that how innocent rakhal is when i pass away who will look after this child and you need to understand rakhal was not a child he was by if you think about his age he was almost 21 years so it was him actually who was taking care of shri ram krishna providing service but it is this motherhood that emanated from shri ram krishna when he was a rakhal and he used to play all the games that a small child plays with his mother and he used to always be stuck to him and once even shri ram krishna prayed to mother kali that o ma o mother let rakhal not become jealous if i so if i show some love to other disciples he prayed this and how to get these fundamental questions answered so we go to a spiritually illumined soul and we ask these fundamental questions like what is life etc but before we see how brahmanand ji has answered these fundamental questions let us take a few minutes to understand a few basic concepts about spirituality i wanted you people to understand these fundamental concepts because if you really want to understand the deeper significance of his answers we need to know these concepts so the first there are three concepts the first concept is okay 
So there are three basic concepts. So the first concept is what is the definition or the nature of truth because we want to get we always say tell me the truth or tell me the real thing or tell me the right answer we want to we don't want a kind of speculation we want to know what is the truth ultimate truth so what is this definition of ultimate truth the second is what is the nature of reality what is this so called what we see what we hear about what is this so, nature of reality what is the relationship between these two things that is the reality and truth what is there is some kind of relationship there is some kind of connection between reality and truth and if you understand this cons this particular schema that i have put it on the screen we'll be better equipped to understand the deeper significance of swami brahmanand ji's answers to these fundamental questions that we have just discussed so coming to the first question what is this definition that we call what is the definition of truth what is the nature of truth we always say satya meva jayate truth alone triumphs so what is this truth so we need proof that it is 100% this is the truth so nagarjuna was a great buddhist philosopher he was a second century philosopher and he had a great monumental thesis that he proved that an entity when we say this entity is true it should fulfill two basic conditions so what are those basic conditions when you say this is true or this is the ultimate truth if it does not fulfill these two conditions it is not true or it is not ultimately true so nagarjuna he proved this in fact it is a monumental thesis it is still exists in our libraries so he says the first condition to tell anything or any entity to be true is number 1 it should be permanent it should not be temporary it should not die away with time and space it should exist eternally this is the first condition and the second condition is it should not be contradictory so first thing we understand what is this non contradictory so it should not change its characters should not change that is what is meant by non contradictory for example sweets okay we all know sweets give us happiness okay but at the same time it is the cause of our unhappiness too because it is because of sweets that we are we are diagnosed with diabetes we have obesity problems and sugar problems hypertension etc the same sweets which gave us joy it is the same sweet that is now giving us all this kind of anxiety and unhappiness one more example our body and mind when we are young and robust this body gives us tremendous joy we like to roam about we like to show off and there is nothing that this we feel invincible but it is the same body that becomes a great pain it becomes a great burden when we become old we can say after 70 or 80 almost 50% yeah, statistics is there almost 50% are diagnosed with dementia there are so many geriatric problems so many senile problems all of this is because of our same body which we loved which gave us so much joy but it is the same body that is which is the cause of misery now so this is what is meant by contradictoriness and if you say something to be to to be true then it should be permanent and it should not change that is it should not be contradictory the second concept is what is the nature of reality so vedanta says there are three levels of reality as we can see in the screen the highest level or the spiritual level is called as paramarthika satta and the second level when we come down 
it's the manifestation of spiritual level itself but when it comes down to matter it manifests as pratibhasika satta or mental realm and when it still comes down it manifests as physical reality or vyavarika satta so in our layman terms we can say it as the highest is spiritual reality then there is mental reality and then there is physical reality i need not explain these terms that they are self explanatory uh, physical reality means what we can see what we can hear what we can touch or the five senses acts in physical reality mental reality are our thoughts or emotions or dreams spiritual reality is something which we have not seen so it is a hypothesis right now and coming to the third concept what is the relationship between this truth and this reality so how do you relate this realities and how do you relate ultimate truth when we have already given a definition that truth means permanent and it should not change it should not be contradictory so we can say in the spiritual realm or in the spiritual uh, reality the definition of truth holds good any spiritual entity is by nature permanent it can never ever die or it can never ever be destroyed it is always there is eternal and it is non contradictory it can never be changed it is satyam anantam brahma it is ananta it is eternal it can never ever have two characteristics it does not change its characteristics as a chameleon does but when we come down when we come to the manifestation of the spiritual reality there is where we can say the definition is invalid it is from that level down that these the so called definition of ultimate truth does not hold good because it is but you can't say it is invalid altogether it is temporarily invalid so what does it mean temporarily permanent or temporarily non contradictory let us take the same example sweets so until you get a diabetes you are happy but if you get th- that is there is a condition there is a time frame there is till you get happiness sweet gives us happiness so there is a temporary fulfillment there is a temporary truth involved similarly our body and mind until we get old body is a great source of pleasure great source of joy but it is only at this particular time frame after that it goes downhill so okay so after understanding these fundamental concepts let us just know one particular law not much that is the law is the higher the level of reality that you are established in that is if you are in spiritual level you can control this mental and physical level if you are in mental level you can control physical level this is just a basic law with this knowledge let us just conclude uh, with only two teachings that brahmanand ji gave and answered these fundamental questions so in belur mat one devotee asked maharaj he asked the same questions that we have discussed he asked maharaj why is there so much suffering in life and why is there more suffering to me and less suffering to others and why this inequality so his answer was wonderful and i would like to read it out so he says 
Do you know the nature of ordinary men? He seeks only pleasures, joys and diversions. And he makes this mistake from the very beginning. 99% of those who seek happiness do not know what it really is. This, they grasp at whatever they find near at hand and believe that they have got the thing that they seek. Then when they are disappointed, they take up something else and again they fail. This is the curse of their lot. But see the foolishness in it. They are disappointed again and again. Still they will not change their course. They will not take up the right path. They pass their lives receiving blow after blow and brooding over their destiny. In fact, the very, they will encourage others also to follow their path and sometimes go to great extents to bring down others to their paths or their understandings of life. Sri Ramakrishna used to compare them to a camel. A camel will not take good grass even when it is close by. It knows very well that thorny grass makes the mouth bleed but still it insists on eating it. In the same way, man suffers because of the wrong thoughts and his wrong desires. These people can never be awakened. He says these people can, these people who have this strong likes and dislikes, strong conditioned minds, they can never be awakened or changed either by their own sorrows and miseries of life or by high lofty ideals that we are speaking right now. They think that they are going on to live eternally and fondly imagine that without them the world cannot go on. What I have in my hand I must enjoy to the full otherwise I shall be a fool. This is the way they think. So thus they think and they drag themselves down to the depths of ignorance and suffering. Then he talks about a different class of men. Then he says there is a second class of men belonging to this higher class. These men are easily influenced by spiritual teachings which awaken in them viveka, that is discrimination between right and wrong and vairagya. When you know that something is wrong, you should renounce that wrong and that strength they have. They regard the world as worthless and yearn for the grace of Lord. They are determined to realize him and solve the mystery of existence even at the risk of their lives. Such a firm resolution that they take and they begin their sadhana and succeed in the end. Sri Ramakrishna used to say according to a popular belief when Malaya breeze, these, these are the breezes that blow in South India because in South India a lot of uh, sandalwood trees are there. All the timbers are converted, all the trees are converted into sandalwood while bamboos and plantains and other trees, they don't get converted, they remain the same. What he means here, here is these bamboos and these plantains are not converted because of their strong animal tendencies and their thick misunderstanding, their thick ignorance of the truths, of the realities that we have just discussed. The second question, I'll quickly finish it, that a disciple of his asked in Banaras, okay? He asked this what kind of question? Like he asked, what is life? And what is the purpose of my life? Why I have been born? So for this also, he gave a beautiful answer. Swami Brahmananji says, human life is an evolutionary struggle. We are all evolving and we are struggling. And we are struggling for what? We are struggling for higher and higher levels of knowledge. This knowledge here means the realities that we have discussed. That is physical, from physical we go to mental, from mental we go to spiritual. These, we try to reach the higher and higher levels of these realities. And we need to know until we are properly established and properly know the right truths at particular level of realities, we cannot come to the higher truths. If you know all the true 
truths of or all the laws of physical reality we can come to the mental when we know the mental laws we can come to the spiritual so this he this is what he's telling life is an evolutionary struggle to realize higher and higher levels of realities and it is marked by different degrees in the progress of human mind in its march towards god it is a wonderful definition of what life is he further writes man cannot attain knowledge unless the mother reveals it unless the reality or unless mother here kali she reveals it we cannot understand it these myst- the mysteries of this world and the next will be revealed only when she discloses them out of her mercy the intellect as our as we ordinary understand is not the real intellect its area its range is very limited what he means by intellect is buddhi buddhi is an intuitive spiritual faculty it is pratyekatman it is a spirit that is inside us it should awaken that is why he used to give mantra dikshas by giving mantra diksha we are awakened that pratyekatman awakens this buddhi awakens the real intellect awakens and by that real awakening we will be able to understand the higher realities of life he adds those who want to gain real bliss in this life those who really desire to solve its intricate problems like who am i what have i come here for why am i suffering so much why does one man attain to godhood and another man remain a brute those who desire these answers to the problems to these problems have one and only one duty what is that duty how to solve these problems how to get the solution there's just one and the only one duty is to strive to realize god by all possible means here by god he also means self realization life's perplexing problems will be solved the moment he is realized so let us conclude here we saw how swami brahmanand ji answered some of the very fundamental questions that most of us face and he gave us wonderful solutions let us pray to swami brahmanand ji maharaj swami vivekananda shri ram krishna and holy mother to give us strength to give us viveka that he was talking about to give us vairagya so that we can renounce the wrong things in life and attain the highest reality that is spiritual reality om shanti 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 hari om tat sat shri ram krishna pranamastu